Hello everyone, welcome back to this lecture video series on trigonometry. And in this video we're going to talk a little bit about Huron's formula, which is a formula discovered about 2,000 years ago by a Greek mathematician, Huron of Alexandria. So here's the setup. We've got a side-side-side tri side, side, side triangle, so we know the sides A, B, and C, and we want to know the area. So it turns out that the area is this rather complicated looking formula. Uh, so first of all, you set S to be the sum of all the side lengths divided by two. And then you take the square root of that new quantity S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Um, everything here is positive and you can take the square root and that gives you the area. And this, this works no matter what the triangle looks like, even if, it, even if you have obtuse, uh, obtuse angles. So let's start off with an example with concrete numbers. Here is a triangle with three, 10, and nine as the side lengths, and we want to know the area. So first we need to calculate S. Uh, so that's A plus B plus C over two. Three plus nine plus 10 is 22, divided by two is 11. So that's our S value. And then we go to the main formula. It's the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. So um, we calculate that's 11 times eight times one times two. Uh, and we take the square root. So it's the square root of 176. So we know the answer exactly. Uh, if we want to know an approximation, then I, I guess the area is about 13.266. Okay, so that's an example. Um, I should say that, so, you know, why, why believe this formula? It's just some formula that's been given to us. So let's try to do this by hand using the law of cosines. Um, so be, like the neat thing about Huron's formula is it brings trig it makes it so that you don't need to worry about trigonometry at all, but we're going to see you can derive it from trigonometry. Okay. So here's how we could have used the law of cosines. So we've got our triangle. Uh, let's set up the th uh, an altitude because remember it's one half base times height so we let's say 10 is our base h is our height and we want to know um in this case we're going to try to find this theta because once we know theta we can use the formula one half three times 10 times sine of theta and i'll give us the area and we can find this theta by using the law of cosines okay so we take the opposite of the angle, nine squared, and that's three squared plus 10 squared minus uh, the correction factor, minus two times three times 10 times cosine of theta. So let's simplify that up a bit. And then I'll add 60 cosine theta to both sides, and then also subtract 81. That gets, uh, okay, so we've done that. Uh, 109 minus 81 is 28. Let's divide both sides by 60, and we get that the cosine of theta is 28 sixtieths. And with the law of cosines, we'll um, take the cosine inverse of that and get 28 sixtieths. Okay, so, um, so now what? We have theta. So we can plug it right into the formula for area. It's one half base, which is 10. Um, well, one half times the product of the two adjacent sides, three times 10, and then we're doing sine of theta. Oh, uh, remember from before that sine of cosine inverse um, of x is square root of one minus x squared. That was because, um, oops, why is that? Let's see. We can use it, we can draw a triangle for this. So if cosine of, we want to do the cosine inverse of x. So cosine inverse of x would be this theta angle right here because we've set up a triangle whose cosine is x. And then sine is right here. And to calculate that, we, we use the Pythagorean theorem. It's one squared minus x squared, take the square root. Okay, so we can use that formula. And then 
I want to show you that it is the same as square root of 176. So remember that if you have a number times, uh, let's write this as x square root y, this is the same as square root of x squared square root y, which is square root of x squared y. You can put con you can move constants inside a square root so long as you square them. Um, and also the constant has to be positive for that to work. So 15, we put it inside by squaring it. And then on the calculator, I, I just checked that the inside here really is 176. So this was a way using the law of cosines and our uh, area formula from the previous video to calculate the area. Great, that matches Heron's formula. So let's see where Heron's formula comes from. We're not going to fully prove it. There's a step I'm going to leave to you, but we're going to see the main part of it using the trigonometry. So just like for our concrete case, we have um, a triangle where we've drawn a, um, an altitude and we want to find the area. Uh, oh, right. And the, this altitude will name an angle. And so then we'll, we, the area of this will be one half AB sine theta. And we, so if we find theta, we're done. So first of all, law of cosines c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. We can go through the algebra to solve for theta, and that gives us as so. Um, so to say what we did, we added 2ab cosine theta to both sides, and then we subtract c squared from both sides. Then we divide by 2ab on both sides, and then we take cosine inverse of both sides. Um, which we can do because we are, um, it's just a property of cosine inverse for this particular application of triangles. So we have theta, the area is one half AB sine theta. We plug it in and use our formula that the uh, sine of cosine inverse is square root of one minus um, what we plugged into cosine inverse squared. And that actually give a, gives us a formula here that it, it's perfectly fine as a formula for the area of a triangle. Notice it uses a, b, and c, and it doesn't make use of either theta or h. So it just uses the unknowns, or it uses the knowns immediately. So this, I'd call it an alternative formulation of Heron's formula. But um, we want to see why it is Heron's formula. And so like before, I brought this in by squaring it. And now I'm going to cheat for this video and just say that you do a tedious calculation to show that what's inside the square root is equal to what's inside Heron's formula square root with s equal to what Heron's formula says s should be. And how do you do that? You kind of just multiply it all out and see that they're equal. Um, it's not very illuminating, so I won't include it in this video. Anyway, we've seen Heron's video, uh, Heron's formula and how you can get it from some of the formulas from the previous lectures. And um, it, it's something that you can use if you have a triangle where you know the lengths of all the sides and you don't want to do any trigonometry. So anyway, um, I'll see you next time. Bye.